Yeah, my talk is on innovative and environmentally uh, friendly construction technology and the materials for floating structure technology. As Professor Chang mentioned, we need a, we have many technological challenges here when we develop this technology. You know, in Hong Kong, and of course, PolyU has done some you know brilliant work. So I will report this works, uh, of course, in a brief manner. So of course, you know, uh, if we try to build this floating structure on sea, uh, usually, you know, sea is, means marine environment, okay? Means both the walking, I mean, walking environment is quite severe. Uh, we have, uh, you know, very complex loading condition like typhoon, okay? And also traditional structure like uh, made of steel or reinforced concrete, they will face big challenge, okay? For example, they may have durability problem. As you know, you know, steel, in fact, they have corrosion problem, okay? This is a very critical issue. And for concrete, you know, concrete is strong in compression, uh, but weak in tension. And the concrete is also easy to crack. So how to make, a, a, I mean, sustainable floating structure, for example, with the surface life of more than 100 years, I think the construction material issue is the first issue we are going to address. So at PolyU, this is just one example. For example, we have developed those so-called ultra high performance, ultra ductile, you know, uh, cementitious or concrete material. As you can see here, we call this the engineered cementitious composites. But what we have done is we try to combine the high compressive strength and high tensile strength and high ductility together. As you know, usually a material, once it becomes stronger, usually it becomes more brittle, but we try to make a stronger material yet very ductile. As you can see here, this is a vertical axis is compressive strength. As you know, nowadays we can make a concrete, you know, with strength up to, you know, 200 megapascal. So of course, another is tensile strength capacity. So uh, usually concrete, you know, uh, cracking strength just 100 micro, uh, uh, String okay, micro, uh, but uh, we can develop okay, uh, very strong material with a ductility more than a six percentage, and also we can realize this performance based design. You know, you can choose the tensile strength and ductility as you need. Okay, and uh, another very, I mean, attractive you know, feature for this material is we can control the crack waves very well, even under ultimate state. I mean, the ultimate failure, our crack width can be controlled well below 60 micrometer, means 0 0.06 millimeter, uh, which is in, usually it's well below, you know, the durability requirement. Okay, and also we can combine the use of this very high strength material, high ductility material with FRP material. FRP means fiber reinforced polymer composites, different from traditional steel, this material is non-metallic, means it has no corrosion problem. And also compared to traditional steel, it's much lighter and much stronger. So we can using this material, of course, alone or together with our, you know, ultra high performance, easy, easy material and make it with very thin plate, very, with very high strength and also very high ductility. Uh, we, of course, this material is relatively expensive, so we recommend to using this material as a jacketing material to protect the internal, okay, reinforced concrete, conventional reinforced concrete structure, or even, you know, steel structures. And in fact, FRP material also can be used, you know, uh, standing alone, okay, for use. This is just one example, a uh, world first floating bridges are uh, made of FRP, using FRP to make a pontoon, okay, this bridge is around, you know, a uh, hundred meter span. And we also develop eco-friendly material. As you know, for landfill, we need a lot of, you know, uh, sand or a gravel for landfill purpose. Of course, in Hong Kong nowadays, it's very difficult to get this raw material. So that's why we also develop technology, try to, you know, uh, turn the local waste, like incineration ash, okay, or some other industrial byproducts, you know, change this kind of ash to artificial aggregate. Uh, this artificial aggregate, of course, can be used for pavement or also can be used to producing concrete, okay, with equivalent performance with traditional concrete. 
We also develop a multifunctional coating, okay, to improve the durability of marine concrete structures. And in the meantime, these coatings are entitled with very innovative feature. We call energy saving, uh, electricity free, energy saving purpose. We paint this coating on the surface of building of other you know, infrastructures. The surface temperature can be significantly reduced without the use of any, I mean, this electricity. This in fact, you know, uh, make it possible to cool your building without use of air conditioning. Uh, that's of course will increase the sustainability of our building and the infrastructures. And also our colleagues also develop, you know, innovative construction technology. As you know, you know, official construction is usually is very challenging. You know, construction period is very short. We have, you know, tidal uh, change and so on. So I think we need a very innovative construction technology. Uh, once, one, I mean, uh, very innovative is MIC uh, technology, uh, which is, you know, uh, Professor Li Heng is a leading expert, you know, in Hong Kong. Okay, he developed this, you know, uh, floating. In fact, his group, you know, is developing this floating, so MIC technology, uh, which can be used for FST solutions. And also, uh, our colleagues doing, you know, because when we put the structure in in ocean, uh, we need to study how what's the movement of the uh, structure, and under this wave and the wind and you know, the action and so on. So. That's why my colleagues, you know, Dr. Stokino and uh, Professor Ying, they also studied the interaction, you know, between the structure and the wave and, uh, and the mooring system, uh, how the, you know, mooring system interact with the seabed and, and the wave and so on. And also we try to monitor, you know, this marine sediment movement, okay. And uh, of course, uh, in PolyU, we also have the only, you know, this longer wave tank, which can simulate the wave condition, simulate the loading condition uh, on silt structures, okay? And uh, also we started the, you know, interaction with wind turbine and uh, a wave, okay? Uh, our colleague, uh, Dr. Professor Zhu Songye and uh, Dr. Dong Yu, they are doing this kind of work. So of course, monitoring is also a very important issue because uh, Professor Chao mentioned stability okay, of structures uh, because it's relevant to human comfort okay, when we stay on this floating structure. So we really have a very strong team led by Professor Ding Xiaoli, who is also the director of our research institute. Okay? He developed many advanced technology. Uh, here, I just show two examples. One is they can, you know, monitor this vibration of this uh, tube, water tube. And then they can see if there's any water leakage problem. Uh, this is very, of course, advanced monitoring technology. And also they can monitor large scale, okay, deformation of the land. Uh, this is just one example based on satellite-based technology. Okay, this is, uh, in fact, they try to, okay, measure the deformation rate of Hong Kong uh, International Airport. So I think uh, this is a very short presentation. I just show you our existing capacity, I mean, at PolyU, so which can be used to, I mean, develop this floating structure technology. Of course, we will uh, welcome, you know, any uh, collaboration, you know, from outside with our team, okay, to further uh, study this topic. I think that's all uh, for, from my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention here. Yeah. So 